What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the R6 track bike series. If you're joining me for the first time, welcome to the channel. Uh, today on this episode, I'm going to step you guys through uh, pulling apart your calipers, both front and rear. We're going to take these apart. I'll show you the tools you're going to need, um, the parts you're going to need, and basically the how-to of pulling them apart and rebuilding them. So, uh, what I have on the bench right now are the front set and the uh, master cylinder. So I'll get you guys set up on the tripod and we'll get this uh, video off and, off and going. Hold tight. Alright guys, so I got you on the stand. We're going to start this process. But uh, first things first, tools you're going to need. You're going to need a uh, 14 millimeter socket or wrench. That's going to take off your banjo bolts. Uh, in this case, these are not the OEM uh, brake lines. As you can see, these are some uh, braided uh, brake lines. Uh, but the, for the most part, your uh, banjo bolt size should relatively be the same. So that's a 14 millimeter. Um, you're going to need uh, needle nose pliers. That'll help you take off your pin to release your um, pin that holds your brake pads in place. And then a uh, pit tool that'll help you take off your your seals. So uh, first things first, just as if this was on your bike, um, you're gonna want to remove the fluid out of the system. And when I took this system off my bike, I did not drain any fluid. So I've got my catch basin here. I'll dump this fluid into there. I'll basically put everything inside this catch basin and then that'll keep things somewhat contained. All right, so hold tight. All right, guys, we're moving on to the next step. We're gonna extract these pistons from the uh, chambers. So in order to do that, we need to uh, block one of these ports and then drive compressed air in the other. And that'll force these pistons from the uh, chambers on out. And then we can pull those out a little easier. So first things first, we're gonna have to put this bleed valve back into the caliper so on the last step we pulled that out and that was to help remove as much fluid as we can from the caliper like I said you will still have some small amounts behind the, uh, the pistons but hopefully you've uh, extracted just about all of it all right, so on this next step, after you uh, used your eight millimeter uh, socket or wrench to drive that bleed valve back into its location, you're gonna get your compressed air nozzle, which I have a tapered one. I like to put a little bit of paper towel around the nozzle and then go ahead and press that into the uh, cavity and then just give small short bursts of air. I put my fingers in there just so I don't blast the pistons completely out. I want to drive them evenly out as much as I can. So I try to get a good angle and show you guys this process. So I'll drive one side out. There's one. There's the other one. Okay. 
Okay. So I can fill them. And what you want to do is you want to get them out far enough to where you can wiggle the piston kind of side to side and then pull it out the rest of the way. So some of these I can feel that I can pull all the way out like this one here, but this one at the top, can you see it? This top one, top right corner, I can't grab it enough to where I can actually wiggle it back and, oh, actually I could. So I might be able to get all these out just in that one first try. Let me see if I can get this back and forth. You guys can see that. What I'm doing is I'm getting my thumbs from the back side and from the front side. And if we say this is the piston and my thumbs on the piston, I'm driving the piston back and forth like this, wiggling it and then also pulling it down. So let's see if I can pull this piston, this top left down. So got my thumb on the front side of it. And then I'm gonna put my thumb on the back side. I can't show you guys. I'll put my finger on the back side and I'll try to wiggle this. It's coming. Well, if anything, that last one right there, I need to drive out a little further. So what I'll do, I'll get a pad, because I can get these two right here. Where can you see me? I can get these two to wiggle all the way out, but I don't want them all the way out. I want to drive this piston out further but if I take these pistons out before I drive that one further out, I won't have the ability to build pressure behind the piston because this chamber will be open. So what I want to do is I want to prevent these two pistons from coming out, which just happens to be the pad thickness itself. So now I can drive more air into that, that hole and let's see if we can push this out. Hold tight. There it goes. All right. Okay, so now I can move that. There it goes. Oh yeah. So that's loose. How can I get this one out? Yep. Okay. So that's loose. So you're going to have to kind of push one back into its chamber. Hopefully not too much. <laughs> I think I just did. All right. Let's repeat that step. So if you do that, you're going to have to go back a step. No biggie. Okay. So you want to have enough clearance so you can actually pull the ch uh, the piston completely out. So leave yourself enough space like I just did. Perfect. And now this one piston is just about out. Okay, and hopefully I've got this down here loose enough so I can wiggle it back and forth, which I do. Okay, two out. Same thing here, turn this over. We need to uh, pull one completely out. Okay. 
Okay. This is where it gets a little tricky because you don't want to get the other one wedged back in there. There's a fine balance of how far it needs to go back inside. Just about out. Okay. Now to get this last one out. Hopefully we're loose enough. Yep, and we are. See how I'm wiggling that back and forth just like that? Okay. Now this is the stuff that's behind your piston. You don't want that grime, that buildup. It should be fresh, clean fluid pushing these pistons in and out. So this dirt, this grime gets pulled back in from bad seals. So if you got a dirty uh, a dirty bike, you know, riding down gravel, you know, dirt roads, and it gets caught onto your uh, your calipers here, you got small amounts of fluid film around these pistons constantly because these pistons are driving in and out of that chamber that has fluid. So you know if you get that build up on these pistons and as they go back inside they're pulling that debris and that's how you get dirt and grime introduced into your system but for the most part we've got those out we've got these four pistons pulled out and as you can see you have too big too small Next thing we're going to do is pull out the uh, O-rings from the inside wall. So you have two O-rings in each chamber. You have an upper and a lower O-ring. I don't know if I'll be able to show you. Let me see if I can get some better lighting. Hold on. All right. Let's see if I can get some, uh, some better light to show you. You'll be able to see that. Well, I don't know, it's kind of a uh, bad lighting. If I take my word for it, there's two O-rings inside there. I'll get those pulled out and that's where your pick tool comes in play. So you want to be careful you don't mar up the inside walls, you know, digging that pick tool around. So you really want to get onto the O-ring and basically pull the o-ring around with the pick tool and then get it to bunch and then flick it out and with this dark lighting I don't think you're gonna be able to see this let me see hold tight all right so on this guys you're gonna need your pick tool 
and you're gonna need to pull these two let me fix the camera hold tight Right, we got one set out you want to be careful <clears throat> like I said you don't want to mar the sidewall so you want to be careful with your uh, your pick you're not using it as a, a leverage against the sidewall you just want to use the tip of the pick to get underneath around the side this nasty one all right off to the next side All right, guys, so we are completely out. We got all the, uh, I should say, the seals are completely out. We're not completely out. We're not done yet. So we got one side, one caliper with all the seals out. Now we got to pull out the pistons and repeat the process on the other caliper. So this is... Um, This is just about ready 
to be wiped down, sprayed down. If you got an ultrasonic cleaner, these would be great to put in. So really what you want to do is clean all that grime, that build up, the sludge out of your system. What happens when you got a fresh uh, set of oil going inside and you got this nasty debris and you ever wonder why your oil turns that honey color is because it mixes with the stuff that's behind your pistons. All right, guys. Same process as this last caliper. We're gonna thread that bleed valve bolt back inside using your eight millimeter wrench or socket. Okay. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take out the uh, pistons. We're gonna pull the seals out. Like I said, repeat the process we just completed. So. Uh, we're gonna get our compressed air. We're gonna get our little makeshift seal. Drive that into the banjo bolt hole. And then we're gonna slowly introduce the air. Okay, that one all shot all the way out. Let's drive that back inside. Okay, let's see if I can get you good. Well, let's see what we can work with on that. I don't know if I can get this one. All right, I pushed the uh, piston that came out back in, and we're gonna try to get that one driven. Okay. All right, I think we are far enough out where I can wiggle these the rest of the way. So we'll start with this top right corner. We'll wiggle that back and forth, we're out. out now we're gonna try this top right corner just pinching it and pulling it and wiggling it back and forth like a loose tooth you're trying to yank out and it's coming take some uh, some finger strength and some uh, decent grip so So this side, this lower side, seems to slide in and out a little easier than this top side. So I'm gonna try and slide this top side out. Okay, you see how I am almost all the way out, but I still need to pull it down just a little bit more so I need to basically pull this lower one down a 
tad bit. Okay. So what it's getting hung up on, just so you guys know, I get clearance to just this front rim and then it gets held up on this little step. So that's the, the tricky part, getting it past that, that step without driving it, driving the other piston too far in to where you can't grab it anymore. This last come on baby wiggle out <laughs> oh all right Whew. okay those pistons are out we'll get our pick tool out Take off this bleed valve now, just to kind of keep order of our parts. All right, same as last time, be careful with your pick. You don't want to mar the inside walls. You just want to basically get your pick right on top of the rubber, and then with a little bit of downward pressure, you want to roll the O-ring out. Oh, don't drop it. So what I like to do is I get my pick dead center of the O-ring. And then while I'm dead center of the O-ring, I press down into the O-ring. And then I'm able to basically manipulate that out. So once I get on the center of the O-ring, I kind of push the O-ring around. And that helps free it up if it's stuck to the side walls and then it'll help you flick it out a little easier once it kind of breaks free that seems to help but yeah can't stress enough the importance of not damaging the sidewalls where these o-rings rest because if you damage those you're buying new calipers new o-rings not going to save you if it doesn't seal all right down to the last one All right, guys, there you have it. I think I'm going to call this a night. Let me wipe off the inside of this just so I don't have fluid leaking around everywhere. So if you can see, I don't know if you can pick it up in the camera, you've got two different sized pistons. You got a larger diameter and a smaller diameter. And in those same chambers, you're gonna have a larger size O-ring obviously for the larger sized piston. But within that same chamber, you're gonna have a thicker, walled and a thinner walled o-ring you can see that so overall diameter is larger and smaller on a set and then the set per chamber is different size so you got two o-rings per chamber let's see if i can line them up for you 
So it'll be just like that. All right, guys, so I got you back on the workbench. Uh, just got done cleaning up all these parts outside. Uh, took some simple green, a nylon brush, and just went to town on all these pistons, the calipers, inside and out. Um, I'll upload some before and after photos. You can really see the, uh, the difference inside these chambers. A ton of slime and, and sludge trapped inside there with you know some sizable amounts of um like grit road grime and uh cleaned up nice i mean for the most part they're not they're not new looking by any means there's some uh definite signs of wear and some aging but for the most part everything cleaned up uh fairly well these pistons more more importantly are uh, reusable um, you want to inspect your piston sidewalls you want to make sure they're nice and smooth. You don't have any pitting or any deep gouges. That's gonna any deep gouges will allow fluid to pass through, so you won't get a good seal, and you'll have leaks. So if you have leaks, that means you're not building up enough pressure, so on and so forth. So for the most part, when you're doing a job like this, definitely inspect your pistons and make sure that they're nice and smooth still. Um, so also I uh, took apart the uh, master cylinder and these are all the internals of this and once again there was a ton of slime and, and sludge trapped inside that. You can see a little bit but that times 10 was just all inside here. So. For the most part, all of these pieces here um, will be replaced on the rebuild kit. Some of the uh, parts will not, but for the most part, this should be working like a uh, new master cylinder when we're all done. Uh, one thing you want to make sure when you're doing the uh, cleaning is you, you know, uh, really spray all the orifices inside and out you know any uh clogged orifice will prevent fluid travel inside these uh holes here they were pretty much clogged and uh just got some brake cleaner on the straw and just blasted them out cleaned up really nice but for the most part here's your front brake system all dismantled we're going to we're going to get these front calipers set up so we can install the uh, new o-rings and get these pistons reinstalled so i'll walk you guys through that set uh, setup or that process uh, so right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean off the workbench i'm going to reorganize everything um, i like to keep things in order <clears throat> so i'll grab the actual calipers and we'll get these um, set up under the uh, tripod and i'll give you guys a good angle or you know try to give you a good angle of the uh, the install process of each o-ring like i mentioned before there's two o-rings uh per piston there's a large um and a or a thin walled and a thick walled o-ring per uh piston so like i said um i'll walk you guys through that uh that process uh but first let's get you uh set up on the tripod and i'll probably do a, a hyperlapse video because this uh this has been kind of dragging out for, for me. All right, thanks. All right, guys, we are all installed. All the new O-rings are installed. The pistons are reinstalled. 
Um, if you saw on the hyperlapse video, I was putting a light film of brake fluid onto the O-rings before installing them, as well as the uh, pistons. So it's always good to uh, grease up your O-rings before installing them. And then the pistons, putting a light film of grease onto the sidewalls, helps slip them past the, uh, the O-rings as well. So um, also I put the new pin from the, re the rebuild kit, as well as the new uh, clips. So once the brake pads come, I'll get those installed and then we'll get these calipers mounted back onto the bike. But for the most part, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. I will make a quick hyperlapse video of the process for the uh, rear brake system. So we'll get that pulled apart. I'll pull the uh, master cylinder out. I'll rebuild the brakes, um, the calipers, but it won't be uh, much of a, tut a tutorial as this one was. I think um, we went through enough on the how-to. It's the same process. It's just a different brake uh, caliper. Um, but as far as the process goes, it's identical. All right, guys. Like I said, I hope you joined, uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned for the next. There's going to be plenty of episodes on this track bike series. Um, I got a lot of parts that I'm changing out. I got a lot of parts that came in. So I got a ton of videos lined up. I'm going to try not to spread these out. I want to get this bike up and running really quick. So goal is to uh, have it done by the end of the month. All right. Stay tuned. Take care.